Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I have a lot of SMPS transformers, some are hand wound by me, and some are salvaged from old devices. So, how do we know if they're still good? Are any windings shorted? And are they suitable for our circuit? Well, this is the circuit I'm going to show you today. It's not just a tester for SMPS transformers, it also works as a simple power supply. It's a very handy tool that helps you check if a transformer is still working properly, whether it's shorted, mismatched, or faulty. At the same time, it can act as a small power supply to power light loads during testing. This circuit also features short circuit protection and overload protection. The operating frequency and dead time can be easily adjusted using variable resistors, making it compatible with many different types of SMPS transformers now, I'm going to start testing the transformers I have. Let's see what happens when we test a good transformer and a faulty one. I've labeled the transformers so it's easier for you to follow along. First up, this is a 1000 watt transformer that I wound myself, designed for a power supply used in an audio system. I'm going to plug in the power. Pay close attention to the LED on the circuit. If it starts blinking, that means the transformer is either shorted or not suitable for the circuit. The LED is glowing normally, which means this transformer is working properly. Next, I'm going to short some of the windings on the transformer to simulate an internal short circuit. Let's see what happens. As we can see, the LED is blinking, which indicates that the transformer is faulty. I'll continue with the remaining transformers. I'll show you step by step how to build a circuit just like this one, right after a short introduction to my partner and sponsor, JLCPCB. JLCPCB provides easy, affordable, and reliable PCB and PCBA solutions, empowering electronics engineers to develop projects efficiently. With 19 years of PCB manufacturing expertise since 2006, running five cutting edge, in-house factories and serving over 5.48 million engineers in 180 countries and regions. Order PCBS from JLCPCB effortlessly. Upload your Gerber file to get instant quote and order in minutes. It's as easy as online shopping. PCB customization, component sourcing, stencil manufacturing, and high precision assembly all in one place. Get 1 to 8 layer PCBS for just $2, efficient large scale production reducing costs and bringing you unbeatable prices. Quality and lead time is reliable. All in house production, ensuring quality stability and strict quality control in every process. Rapid turnaround, lightning fast PCB production in just 24 hours. Don't miss JLCPCB 6 layer PCB special. Get $30 off with a coupon and enjoy top quality 6-layer PCBS for just $5, plus to you enig finish and no engineering fees for via and pad. This is the schematic diagram of the circuit. It includes a stage that converts to 120 volts AC into DC. The AC input line is connected in series with a 100 watt light bulb in case the transformer is shorted or faulty. The bulb will light up to protect the circuit and prevent component damage. Next to that is a small power supply around 13 volts to power the oscillator IC. 
The main oscillator uses the SG35 to 5 IC with both frequency and dead time adjustable via variable resistors. This is the result just one week after I uploaded my PCB design files to JLCPCB's website. The board features thick copper traces with clean, sharp routing throughout. The component layout is neat and organized, with all part labels clearly printed on the silkscreen for easy assembly. All the files are shared for free, including the Gerber files. You can download them from the description section of this video. First, we'll solder the components in the power supply section. Then, we'll measure the output voltages to make sure all the values are correct and stable. Now I'm going to power up the circuit and check the required voltage levels. The input voltage is 220 volts AC. After rectification and filtering, the DC voltage reaches around 320 volts. The supply voltage for the SG35 to 5 IC is about 15 volts, which is ideal for stable operation of the circuit. Next, we'll solder all the remaining components. I've already shown you how to make the GDT transformer in a previous video. You can check it out here. I'll be using an oscilloscope so you can see the waveform after the GDT. I've chosen a switching frequency of around 50 kHz, but you can adjust it depending on your needs and the transformer type. This circuit also includes a soft start function, and you'll clearly see how it works when we look at the waveform on the oscilloscope. Once everything is ready, we'll install the MOSFET into the circuit. Here, I'm using a common type, the IRF740. You can also use any equivalent MOSFET, as long as it has a voltage rating of at least 450 volts to ensure safe and stable operation. Thanks for watching the video. If you found it helpful, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel to support me. Feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions. See you in the next video.